You you I never, you stood with Governor Kathy Hochul and you co-signed that decision. You did. And I'm not saying this as someone who's following social media. I'm saying that as an attorney in the city and an activist who follows everything that you do. Yeah, if you I'm glad you do. How do I even intro this video? So there was a discussion between Ole, Ole Oluren, and New York City Mayor Eric Adams. This took place on the Breakfast Club radio show. And I, I'm i trying to get words out to properly <laughs> intro everything you're about to witness, the, the incredibleness that was this debate. So Ole is a friend, is a former podcast host, is a movement lawyer, is a political commentator. The reason why this was highly anticipated when it was teased yesterday is this is Olay's YouTube channel. She has a video from six months ago called Eric Adams, the worst mayor in America. Olay hates Eric Adams for a good reason. <laughs> so having, having this debate, I, I'm not sure Eric Adams knew what the hell he was getting into. Uh, it, it, this is... It is incredible to to witness. This was the tease yesterday from Olay's account. I promise you, this is not AI. That is me and Eric Adams. Brace yourselves. Please know in advance, I didn't play around. No, she did not. So let me start with the first clip here. It concerns this uh, story. How bad is crime in the subways? Officials have spent millions to make New Yorkers tra transit riders feel safe. The investment is motivated more by passengers' perception than by crime rates. So... This part of the discussion gets to why do New Yorkers have this perception that crime is so bad in New York City when in reality it's not. Let's go before. Uh, first of all, I would love to give me, give me the quotes on my rhetoric because I'm, I'm lost on that. Can you give me the quotes? Oh, that you fair monger yeah, about yeah, the subways? Yeah, give me oh, the... you've consistently done that since the day one of your administration. One of the first things you did was add a thousand officers to the subway because you claimed that the subways are unrideable. You and Hochul did this and said how dangerous it is. And you recently did that when you deployed the National Guard. Sister, but that's not, that wasn't my question, Queen. My question was, what was my fear mongering? What did I say? You continuously say, I, I could point to a number of videos and quotes and everything from you, but you've said repeatedly that the subway ways are dangerous, that New York is dangerous. You complain about crime relentlessly. So what I'm saying to you is, if you are saying that New York is the safest city, it's one of the safest big cities in this country, which is true, and you're recognizing that the subway stations are, in fact, not half as dangerous as they're presented to be, I'm saying, how do you reconcile how your rhetoric has played into people's fear? Okay. And, and, I, I, and not even just rhetoric, I would say the actions, because she, she's right. If, if you tell us which is that different. they're the safest. Which is no, different. But it's the same <laughs> thing, though. If you put a thousand police officers in the subway, two thousand mm -hmm. police officers in the subway, that don't make us feel safe. We think something's wrong if you're doing okay. that. Let, 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 let me let me first let me peel back again because you gotta always peel back this stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, oftentimes how you depict in the media that I, I don't control is how people interpret you. I didn't put the national guards in the subway. The governor did. I know, I but I know what you said. But you said, but you said, Eric, you you I never, you stood with Governor Kathy Hochul and you co-signed that decision. You did, and I'm not saying this as someone who's following social media. I'm saying that as an attorney in the city and an activist who follows everything that you do. Yeah, if you, uh, I'm glad you do. Mm -hmm. Then you realize how I turned the city around. If you follow everything I do, you realize I would, that I'll, I would say no. But we could get to that yeah, next. Yeah, yeah, Loosen up your time, man. Yeah, it's gonna be a long day. All right, so I'm gonna get to, of course, a lot more clips here, but. One of the things that really stood out to me throughout this discussion is just how much better Olay is at questioning a public official than the vast majority of media is. Now, part of that is simply in the hiring process at these, whether it's cable news or whatever it is, they want to be able to maintain guests. Right. If you're going to go hard at a, at, at a politician, it's unlikely they're going to want to come back on your show. But if all of media did that, if they all treated these politicians as they should, especially when they're, you know, more corrupt individuals, then there would be this standard set where, hey, if you want to get your message out, you're going to have to appear on one of these shows and you're going to have to deal with proper questioning. This is proper questioning from media. It is so rare to see this that it. it Watching this is incredibly refreshing. Now, I'm going to get to, I'm going to circle back around to the rhetoric of fear mongering that Mayor uh, Eric Adams has done about crime. This gets to a later clip that I'm going to show. So I don't need to uh, spoil that now because he essentially does it in the video, like in this discussion <laughs> later on. But I want to uh, show you this. So this is not part of the interview, obviously, but this is one of the funniest clips I've ever watched. I am not exaggerating here. I have this bookmarked on Twitter. I don't have any bookmarks on Twitter, but I've bookmarked this. This is uh, from, I believe, 2011. 
So Mayor Eric Adams is a he's a former police officer, but this gives you an idea of the kind of fear mongering he is capable of. <laughs> it's not hard to imagine after watching this how he may be fear mongering when it comes to crime as the mayor of New York City. You can look in a jewelry box, a jewelry box of this nature, maybe a simple jewelry box, but if you look through it closely, you don't know what your child may be hiding. For instance, a gun. Look at picture frames and behind them, cameras. Try to determine what's, what's taking place. Behind a picture frame, you can find bullets. You should always, when your child bring in his popular knapsack with many different locations, look through it to see what exactly is your child carrying in addition to a book. Something simple as a crack pipe. Something simple as a, as a baby doll. Could be just a baby doll, but also it could be a place where you can secrete or hide drugs. Run your hands over the pillows and see if you feel anything that's unusual. Like a pillow like this with a button is a perfect invitation to hide something. And I've felt something bumpy. I will reach in, see what it is. Just look and see what's inside your bookcases. It could be more than just books. Perfect place to hide uh, cocaine. That video never gets old. I've seen this, I don't know, 20, 30 times. Uh, popular knapsack with many different locations. Uh, <laughs> this is a video I often quote to myself. Something as simple as a crack pipe. It, it's just so, it's so absurd. It can't, it's not hard to imagine how this guy is fear mongering. Now let's get to the uh, second real clip from this discussion. This uh, gets to the NYPD stops, the, the return to stop and frisk. Because you're yeah, an attorney. They you have. Respect. They say based yes, on that regret? they have. The city is, there are, they have multiple reports. The New York Times, the Gothamist, the city comptroller, and the federal monitor who reports, who reports, who's tasked with making sure that NYPD and Rikers are in compliance with the law have both submitted reports saying that since you became mayor, there's been a return of stop and frisk, that there have been over 15,000 stops, 97% of whom have been on black and Hispanic people. A fourth of those stops and searches have been unconstitutional and, and they've yielded very few results. Now let's, so let's, 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 okay, let's, yeah, Let's peel it back. Yeah, let's peel it back. This is, if you go and watch the full video, and I, I encourage that you, you do, this is one of Eric Adams' tactics. When faced with the facts that he has no reasonable explanation for, no way to argue his way out of it, he often wants to peel it back and then never actually directly addresses the points that Olay is bringing up. Or he changes the topic, or I'll get to a clip where he just turns to Charlemagne completely ignoring Olay as if she isn't there. It's, it does not bode well for Eric. It doesn't make him look good. Like he can try and avoid these questions. He can try and, and avoid these facts, but it's not helping him. Now, just to, you know, bolster what Olay was saying there, this is from ABC News, NYPD safety team making high number of unlawful stops, mostly people of color. And New York City Mayor Eric Adams revived the unit that is doing that. So as Olay stated, after analyzing a random sample of stops by neighborhood safety teams in 10 precincts, the monitor found that more than 97% of the people encountered were black or Hispanic, with approximately 93% being men. A quarter of the frisks lacked re reasonable suspicion, and a third of the searches lacked legal basis. This does not make people feel safer. Do you think the people being targeted here with these unlawful stops, do you think they feel safe? So this goes to this, again, the, the, this fear that Eric Adams is at least partially guilty for. Of course, the media plays a big piece in it as well. But he's at least, he, he's, a, he's feeding into it. He isn't outright re rejecting the, uh, the, the facts. Or he is outright rejecting the facts. He is outright rejecting the, the fears that people have, the unfound fears that people have about crime. He is feeding into it by reviving these sorts of units and and supporting, you know, the National Guard or police officers, uh, more of them appearing on the subways when it's not necessary and making a lot of people feel less safe because of it. And this also goes to, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, the investment is motivated, the investment into um, policing is motivated more by passengers' perception than actual crime rates. The facts here, in mid-2022, there was about one violent crime per one million rides in the subway, according to New York Times analysis. Since then, the overall crime rate has fallen and ridership has increased, making the likelihood of being a victim of violent crime even more remote. 
Last year, overall crime in the transit system fell nearly 3% compared with 2022 as the number of daily riders rose 14%. Essentially, there is no reason that people should be more fearful right now about crime in New York City when it is going down. Yet, uh, this is this goes to this goes <laughs> to a lot of what is happening. New York Democrats are preparing for the November election and are trying to address perceptions about rising crime, an issue that Republicans rallied uh, or sorry relied on to win congressional races in 2022. So, because of these perceptions that Mayor Eric Adams is feeding into. But, of course, the media is as well. Republicans are, especially. There is this attempt to combat the fears, the unfound fears, but combat them with real-world attempts, like funding, increasing funding and policing, putting more police officers in places that, that they're not needed, making more people on those subways feel less safe, the ones that are being targeted, because of those actions. So the, it's it's this... It's simply doing it for the politics of it, as opposed to Democrats trying to uh, create their own narrative and their, their own narrative based on reality. They're instead feeding into this fear mongering that is being perpetuated by, be it the mayor, be it uh, media, be it Republicans. Let's get to the next clip now. This is about Rikers. I've been on Rikers Island more than any mayor in the history of the city talking with inmates and correction officers to turn around what's happening on Rikers Island. I know Island. you go to Rikers in 2022 when there were three deaths back to back because corrections officers left their post and allowed it to happen. You went to Rikers to express your support for the corrections officer. I know you go to Rikers. I, no, what no, I do but, want you to well, do, Eric, you know what, Mayor that, Adams. But you keep you keep giving out misinformation. It's not misinformation, Mayor Adams. I'm so, quoting the I was monitor. on Rikers. I was Misinformation, eh? Well, this is from uh, New York One. Mayor Eric Adams visits Rikers Island, defends correction officers. The visit comes after two detainees died in custody in a 48-hour period this week and another one over the weekend. Where is the lie? So this was just a great example to showcase how Mayor Eric Adams uh, is just... Outright lying. That's it. He has no way to defend what he's what he's saying. Next clip. This is going to be on cuts at Rikers. People are coming into Rikers in terrible medical conditions. And not it's getting not that, their medical it's not, appointments. It's not that they were dying because um, correction officers were killing them. People were coming in with heart problems. Well, when, under, problems. But, but under, they were overdosing on, on drugs. When will okay, people in Rikers all, start to feel that? Because I know I got people that are in Rikers right now serving time, and they hate it. They think it's disgusting. Yeah, these, They're trying to raise awareness like, oh, to it. Who likes shells, brother? Who yeah. likes shells? Respectfully, Mayor shells. Adams, fundamentally, the things that you were saying <laughs> is untrue. You actually cut $17 million that were used for classes for people at Rikers, Rikers to reenter society. Those were cut check under the, your... Check, the, check out the programs. Those that, were cut under your... Those were cut under your administration. We were spending millions of dollars. 31 people have died. Died at Rikers we were spending, since Eric Adams we were spending became mayor. Millions of dollars. So everything Ole said there was, of course, correct. I'll show you the receipts in a second here. This clip for me, though, really, really showcases how disrespectful Eric Adams is in the face of opposition. Look at how he just turns away and starts talking to Charlemagne as if Ole is not there. Why can't he address her when he's saying what he's saying? Because he knows that she will directly call out his bullshit. So he just turns around, pretends she's not even there. Because again, he has no way to defend himself. This goes to the point that Olay was making. This is from Politico, which, by the way, not a liberal paper. Politico is incredibly, uh, you know, mainstream, Washington, conservative. Eric Adams' budget cuts hit Rikers Island. Going on to uh, say here, canceling the 17 million a year initiative as part of the mandate mayor eric adams gave city agencies in april to cut their budgets for the upcoming fiscal year by four percent the mayor's budget director cited the cost of the migrant crisis as the main reason not only cutting money out of rikers that was going to help with uh to combat uh recidivism and help reduce the violence within jails cutting that money and then blaming migrants And there was actually, you know, again, this discussion is an hour long. There was a little too much discussion about migrants in this, in the whole video. It was, it goes to showcase just the, the kind of rhetoric that the mayor's office puts out that then gets latched onto by the media. Because it wasn't even just, 
it wasn't even just Eric Adams bringing it up. It was also the other host. Uh, not Olay, of course, but the others on The Breakfast Club. So they were sort of feeding into it as well. It goes to, again, how much power the the mayor has over whatever rhetoric is, be, is being used about the city. Let's get to the last clip here. And this goes, this circles back around to the first clip about uh, Eric Adams and his fear-mongering about crime. What what I must do t- with New Yorkers is, is give them the facts, mm-hmm. not give them what people are spewing out there. Mm-hmm. The facts the facts are clear, as I've always stated. We are the safest big city in America. And as people talk about reporting these the reports that come out and reporting how things are done, no one wants to report the fact that everyone is saying across the globe, New York is the safest big city in America. Are we trending the right way, Ole Amy? I, th- I think that New York, I don't dispute that New York is safe. What I dispute is how Mayor Adams' own rhetoric is the reason why people don't feel safe. I, reg- okay. I agree that New Yorkers okay. don't feel safe because okay. of the way that NYPD, the Post, and Mayor Adams go about sensationalizing okay. crime. And I'm asking you to talk about it differently. Okay. Uh, and listen, and you have a right to your opinion and your belief. We, You and I have a philosophical disagreement. You... As many. It's not about the philosophical disagreement. Many people on the far left disagree with me. You know, many people on the far left, they say, Eric, people should be allowed to sleep on the streets um, no matter what. They should be allowed to sit on your stoop and inject themselves with drugs. They should be allowed to go in stores and steal whatever they want. They shouldn't have to pay on the subway (laughs) system. They should be allowed to carry a gun and be able to come out the next day. Like, people disagree with me all the time. Earlier you asked me to point out the rhetoric. Earlier you asked me to point out specifically what you say to fairmonger about crime, so I just would like to say, Exhibit A, like what you literally Uh, just did. You continue to say in this that New York is the safest big city while simultaneously you are the one sensationalizing the crime. I point out which all is I the facts? Is, is it safe or is it not? Is, all I know is when I came in office. This is an incredible sequence. And I'm glad I am ending on this because this goes from showcasing Mayor, the exact issue with Mayor Eric Adams, where he goes to discussing the fact that New York City is safe. And then when challenged on his rhetoric, he goes back to fear mongering about, you know, homelessness, about shoplifting. Like, <laughs> is New York City safe or isn't it? The reason why. He can't just pick one side is because there are unfound fears pushed by the media, pushed by Republicans and enabled at the very least by Mayor Eric Adams that he then is trying to address politically. So even though there the, the fears about crime in New York City are unfound, not justified, he buys into it. He supports those fears by increasing policing by putting more police in the subways, by supporting the National Guard in the subway, by t- making all these moves to back policing, even though the facts show he does not need to do this. He should instead use his status, use use the mayor's office to put out the reality about New York City and about crime. But he's trying to address like the, he's trying to address both sides making him just appear completely dishonest because you can't both recognize that crime in New York City is incredibly low. New York City is a very safe place. And then at the same time, try and justify more policing. You, you, like, you can't square that circle. <laughs> but he's doing it as a politician. It's an incredible discussion. So I'm going to link to the full thing below the video on YouTube in the description box. I encourage you to check it out. Of course, there's a lot more to it that I didn't get to. But it's it's definitely worth watching. I don't think you will ever see Mayor Eric Adams challenged like this by anybody else ever again.